Alright guys, so I've just finished my low intensity cardio. I went for 25 minutes, I did 25 minutes of normal cardio and then I did 5 minutes in bare feet. Now I'll explain why. So I did low intensity cardio because if I do high intensity cardio, it tends to interfere with my weight training, especially my lower body training. Because I tend to recover really slowly, like I can't handle high volume. I can handle frequency, but high volume, no, I get fatigued super, super easy. So that's why I do low, low intensity cardio training, basically. So I did 20 minutes. I started off on the incline, and my calves were starting to burn because I did leg day yesterday. So I went a bit easy and put it out. But it is what it is. And then I did five minutes in bare feet at the end. So that's how I can actually strengthen up the muscles in my feet. Because basically, hardly anyone walks around in bare feet anymore. We're always wearing shoes, except when we're in our home, inside. So I'm always barefoot inside the house and as much as I can to strengthen up the muscles in my feet. So now what I'm going to do is some core exercises and I'll film them for you. So for me, planks are way too easy. So to train anti-extension, which is basically all we want to do is prevent that from happening. Yeah, we want to prevent that. So like in a plank, for example, we don't want this to happen. We want to prevent that. So because planking is too easy for me, I'm using the ab, the, the, um, the ab will, I almost forgot what, what, what it was called there for a second, the ab will roll up. So all I do is ab will roll outs, so I just keep my arms straight, try to push away from it, and then all I do is try and maintain that without letting my back curve or round. So I'll, I'll go for 8 reps maybe. Just go as far as you need to when you do these. As soon as your back starts, you want to come back right before your back starts to curve or around. First of all, I just want to state that I'm one of those weird people that likes to train without music. Except when I go super heavy or going for a one rep max. Then I like to get it out of my head as much as possible and I just blast the tunes. So now I'm just doing a Copenhagen hold. I'm doing a regression of the exercise. So a progression would have, you know, it'd be your leg straight like that. But I'm just going to have this leg bent. And what it works is your adductor and your obliques isometrically. So we're trying to we're trying to train anti-lateral flexion in the torso. So what I'm going to do is come up here, try and have my elbow directly underneath my shoulder. Try and go into a nice straight line, and keep my hips up nice and high towards the ceiling for about thirty seconds. I also push my hips forward too, so I don't go like this, I kick them forward. Oh. So, just a little side note, when I do dynamic stretching, especially hip stretches, my left adductor feels tight, but tightness can also be a sign of weakness. And when I do this Copenhagen holes, my left side, my left adductor is a lot harder than my right adductor. So obviously there's a weakness there. So just to remind you that tightness doesn't necessarily mean it's tight and needs to be stretched. It could just mean that it's weak and needs to be strengthened. 
I did three sets of the ab wheel rollouts. I did three sets of the Copenhagen holds, and I am pooped. Oh, just finished up. Um, I don't feel like doing it anymore. I'm too tired. And honestly, guys, if you feel tired, still work out because a workout is better than no workout. All right. Just do what you can, and anything is better than nothing. So, or something's better than nothing. Okay, thanks, th thanks for watching guys, I'll post more videos soon, and I'll make a video soon of how I've been structuring my workouts lately, and maybe even a full day of eating for you guys. Alright, see you soon.